I'm going to mention a name to you, and you tell me what memory comes to mind. Mick Jagger. Well, <laughs> I have a, a, president, a prejudice uh, for him, if you will. Uh, I had gotten in with, with Bess Coleman, the manager of, uh, of Brian Epstein, who managed the Beatles. And I was getting exclusives and all kinds of stuff from the Beatles and got to meet them and go to the Bahamas with them and got to know them pretty well. And at the same time uh, that we were presenting them, the booker said, I've got this new group in uh, London that I want to bring over to the States and see if they can't duplicate what the Beatles have done. I said, okay, what's their name? He said, they call themselves the Rolling Stones. I said, oh, okay. He said, would you be willing to promote them? I said, it sounds exciting. Send me a copy of what they've got. So he sent me a copy of a record. So I got it, and I listened to it. I said, God, that's great. So I put it on the air. It got a little bit of reaction, and the Rolling Stones came to town, and they were staying at the Carlton House in Pittsburgh. And I knew the Carlton House. It's where Eddie Cochran used to stay. And so uh, the bookers... <laughs> the promotion man for the label, London Records, before the Rolling Stones, London Records never had anything more than classical elevator music. All of a sudden, this very stuffy label out of London called London Records had a group called the What? And they were then their rock and roll. And I just knew I thought they were pretty good. Well, when they came to town, the local promotion man wanted to take, wouldn't know if I wanted to go over and meet them. I said, sure. So he came by, and all the way as we walked to the hotel at the Carlton House, he's telling me how embarrassed he was to have to introduce these guys to me. <laughs> he said, I just can't believe what's happening to my company. He said, they've gone crazy. And so we get there, and uh, the very first person I meet is Mick. He somehow had been told by this guy or somebody, Bess Coleman or someone, that I was Eddie Cochran's brother. And so he immediately grabbed me and took me to the other, to three others and told me, it's Eddie Cochran's brother. I said, no, 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 no. I was Eddie's best friend before he died. And, uh, oh, God, they went gaga. They just couldn't believe it. So I thought, oh, this is going to be fun. So that night I go to the concert. It's held in a park in Pittsburgh. I don't think there was 400 people there. I was so embarrassed. I thought, oh, God, what have I done? And at that point, uh, I, I, I didn't know what it was going to, but I knew that I had to swallow it and see what, what the, why that didn't happen. And uh, so I went to work. The next morning, I walked by the general manager's office, and his secretary said, John, Mr. Gibbs would like to see you. <laughs> so I went into his office, and as I walked in, he smiled and looked up from his desk, threw a copy of the local Pittsburgh Post-Gazette in front of me, that showed a picture of the Rolling Stones on stage, and the article was all about how unkempt they were, how a disgrace it was that they even came to town, and no one wanted to see them. They were awful, was the review. And my boss says, John, don't ever subject me to this again, <laughs> ever. <laughs> so until he died about 10 years ago, we always laughed over that. <laughs> so that's my Rolling Stones story. <laughs> Hi, this is Marcus Singletary. Please subscribe to my channel.